Today, we want to introduce our recent review article of the emerging role of the gut microbiome in the cancer response to immune checkpoint inhibitors, a narrative review in JIPO. So we invite Dr. Sei Ching Jim Young, the correspondent of this article, and discuss the content today. Hello, Dr. Yang. And uh, anyway, the, would you introduce yourself first? Hi. <clears throat> Um, my name is uh, Sai Ching Yang. Uh, I'm a professor in the uh, Department of Emergency Medicine at the uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Dr. Yang. So anyway, I will ask a few questions about the article, the relationship between gum microbiome and cancer response to immune checkpoint inhibitor. The first question is, could you tell us the mechanism that contributes to responder of the tumors to immune checkpoint inhibitor for gut microbiomes? Well, uh, in our paper, we summarized the uh, result uh, uh, about the mechanisms uh, in the table one. So it's a mm -hmm. summary of uh, the uh, a collection of uh, various studies uh, that were published. Uh, and in the table, uh, we well, to make the long story short, so basically the microbiome uh, can lead to increase uh, and uh, stimulation of the secretion of cytokines uh, by the MHC class II restricted T cells and dendritic cells, uh, both peripherally as well as uh, in the uh, uh, tumor. Um, and, uh, you know, there are still, you know, gaps in uh, this mechanism, like, for example, uh, wh what species and through what mechanisms that lead to this uh, stimulation of the uh, immune response, and that is uh, still uh, uh, under investigation, and it's not very clear at this point. Okay, thanks so much. So, second one, are there any predictive markers to classify responder or not? Well, the microbiome is very diverse, especially when we're looking at the uh, composition of uh, the species. So at this point, there's no strong standalone predictor. Um, so the, and it's a variation in the uh, uh, specific components of the microbiome, uh, both geographically as well as uh, individually, and people can uh, change uh, the components of the gut microbiome over time. It is very difficult um, to synthesize all these uh, different <clears throat> uh, parameters uh, that have uh, uh, a small influence uh, on the uh, immune response. So long story short, there's no single uh, strong standalone predictors, but hopefully in the future uh, from uh, the synthesis or, uh, of uh, multiple, a large number of parameters, uh, that we can come up with uh, scoring systems uh, or principal components uh, for the prediction. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. And then the third one, to modulate the composition of a gum microbiome, does this manipulation change the immune response to immune checkpoint inhibitor? Well, the uh, early evidence, uh, uh, especially like uh, some uh, animal studies would suggest that it, uh, it does the manipulation of the microbiome can change the immune response to immune checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, but this is an area of active research, and I, I have heard of uh, uh, some uh, companies uh, that are trying to uh, uh, test and evaluate uh, like probiotics uh, or various uh, methods uh, including uh, the microbiome uh, from fecal material uh, in order to try to uh, do cl uh, clinical trials uh, to demonstrate the efficacy of such a modulation. I got it. So yeah, the first one, the last question. In the real world, the cancer patients sometimes are treated with multiple medications such as antibiotics or probiotics. So it would be a big challenge to maintain homeostasis and gain adequate response from immunotherapy ultimately. So could you tell us about the idea to overcome these barriers such as a fecal microbiota transplant? Well, <clears throat> this is uh, indeed a uh, uh, very important issue. Like uh, I work in the emergency center 
And uh, these days, uh, some of the immune checkpoint inhibitors are used in combination with cytotoxic chemotherapy. And uh, um, uh, very often we see patients that come in with uh, uh, infectious complications that would mandate the use of uh, antibiotics. Uh, and uh, how, like, it, when we have to use the antibiotics, uh, definitely that will change the microbiome. And uh, what can we do uh, afterwards to restore the microbiome uh, or influence the microbiome uh, favorably uh, to uh, improve uh, or try to ameliorate uh, the impact of the antibiotic treatments on the uh, microbiome in order to restore the uh, response to immune checkpoint inhibitors. You know, that is a, an area of uh, active research uh, and the potential uh, methodologies to uh, uh, influence or restore the microbiome would include like prebiotics, probiotics, uh, fecal uh, microbiota, transplantation. Um, but uh, uh, in addition to these uh, methods, uh, I think that's clinicians. Uh, they, we probably need to think about uh, the, uh, the, the use of antibiotics. We probably might need to uh, uh, prescribe the antibiotics only when it's uh, clinically uh, required or necessary uh, and try to avoid, uh, be a good steward of antibiotics and, and you know, follow the antibiotic stewardship uh, um, recommendations and, and perhaps choose um, um, narrow spectrum antibiotics uh, or uh, give a uh, short course uh, or shorten the, the duration of the antibiotic treatment as, uh, as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so thank you for your answer. So today we are here with Dr. Yang and uh, have a brief presentation for our new review article. And then thanks again for having time with us and wish you a wonderful day today. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.